Hello everyone, welcome to your 22nd C++ Qt game tutorial. We're going to go ahead and quickly pick up right where we left off in the previous one. So if you recall, we made a member function called create hex column that basically creates a column of hexes of a specified number um, at a specified x and y coordinate. So now we want to extend this and uh, we want to loop this member function. Basically, we want another function that uses this create hex column function to create a grid and we call that member function place hexes. So let's just go ahead and do that. So right here in the place hexes, right now we just create one column. But we, what we want to do is basically generalize this place hexes member function. And by generalize, when somebody says generalize a method or a member function or uh, just a global function, what they mean is have it take parameters that alter its behavior. So now we want to generalize this place hexes member function um, uh, basically, we want to give it an X and a Y, and it will basically create a grid of hexes specify, starting at this X and Y. So um, basically, let's go ahead and go inside the header file. Place hexes will take an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and in addition, it will take number of columns. So we'll do calls, and then um, let's see. Uh, and then number of rows, so number of rows that we want. Okay, and let's click, click this little white bulb to also change the definition signature because we changed it in the header file. Now we want to change it in the implementation file. There we go. So our place hexes member function now takes a bunch of variables, an X and a Y coordinate representing the top left-hand grid that we're going to create, grid of hexes that is. And then we have two, uh, two arguments, I should use the correct term. We have two arguments, one of them specifies the number of columns of hexes and one of them specifies the number of rows of hexes. Okay, so now the simplest thing is we know we have this member function that creates a column, so let's just go ahead and traverse it and create a bunch of rows. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, well, let's keep this around, oh, okay. So well, actually, let's just let's just delete it. Okay. So for size t i equals zero, and then as long as um, well, we're gonna do, and our ending is going to be calls. So number of columns basically. Uh, i is less than n. I plus plus. Okay. And we're gonna create hex column. At which location? Um, we're going to create it at the X location plus, depending on which column it is, we want to shift it to the right. Similarly, how we shifted each row down, we want to shift each column to the right. So let's just kind of generalize this. Um, I'm going to create a variable up here called, uh, I'm going to call it int X shift. And I'm going to shift them, uh, I don't know, 80 pixels. Let's see if 80 works because that worked for the down. And then we're going to do int and then y. Uh, well, okay, x shift, 80 pixels. So we're going to create a hex column at an x of um, plus x shift times calls or i because we are uh, traversing through the columns using the variable i. Okay, so basically the first uh, x position of the first column will be i will be zero, so it'll be a zero will be added to the x that we specified for the whole grid. I hope this is making sense to you guys. If not, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll draw pictures in the next tutorial uh, video to show you guys. But basically, this place hexes is, um, let me go ahead and make a quick drawing actually right now. I think that might help you guys. So basically, we have a member function called place hexes. So Okay, it takes an int x, int y, and then an int calls, and an int rows. So uh, let me go ahead and draw this as fast as I can. Okay, so this place hexes makes a grid. So this will be a whole grid. It consists of columns and rows. And the x and y that you pass into this member function specifies the top left-hand corner of the whole grid. So it, it represents the x and y represents this top left hand corner. Now this grid calls another member function called uh, create hex column. This also take an, takes an x 
an OI, and then a number of basically uh, rows. And this, at a certain X and Y position, it will create a row of hexes. And for the row, I'm going to go ahead and use a different color, uh, just this color, I guess. Okay, there we go. So now this place hexes member function will just call this member function repeatedly. So it will create a column here. And then the next column it will create here. So as you can see, each time that we are uh, looping here, we want to shift and pass in a new X into the create hex column. So that's why uh, basically I'm doing X plus X shift times I. And our X shift is just 80. I'm, I'm just seeing if this value works. If it doesn't, I'll adjust it. Um, okay, so we got that. And then we also need to send in a Y position. Right now for the Y position, we're just going to pass in what was passed into the place hexes. And then for the number of rows, uh, well, obviously, whatever was passed in to the number of rows uh, to, to the main function. Okay, I feel like I'm, explain, I'm doing a bad job of explaining this, but I hope the picture helped a little bit. And just kind of, you just have to slow down and read the code to really understand how this stuff works. So now let's go ahead and see if our place hexes member function works. Let's go ahead and go inside the game and the start. And then we call the place hexes and we'll, okay, let's go ahead. And uh, see. well, place hexes is now different. So let's make sure we pass it. Um, so at what X, I guess, I don't know, at 100, 100, we wanna create four columns or five columns of five rows. Let's just see how this works. Cannot open. That's because it's already open. No problem. That should fix it. Let's try it again. Okay, there we go. Um, so this looks strange at first, but in fact, it is doing exactly what we told it to do. It's creating a five by five grid of hexes. But as you can see, I need to shift them more to the right. So let's go ahead and change that, um, uh, that 80, uh, Actually, no, no, no. It looks like it's shifting them the correct distance, but now we want each um, other row, each other row to be shifted down. So we want this row to be shifted down so it fits right into there. And then we want this row to be shifted down. So every other row needs to be shifted down. So we need a Y shift also. Um, Okay, so now whenever you you think of doing alternating uh, alternative things, or I, that's not the correct word. Whenever you want to do something based on like every other, for example. So whenever you want to alternate, um, you want to think about using the modulus operator. It's about finding whether something is even or odd. Because if it's even, do one thing. If it's odd, do another thing. So that's the simplest way to. Uh, implement anything that requires you to do a different behavior based on every other uh, value, I guess. So clearly in here, every other row, every other column, we want shifted down. So we can go ahead and use uh, the remain the modulus operator. And the example should clarify this. So we'll go ahead and go in here. And uh, let's go inside the hex board, place hexes. And we need a Y shift. So Y shift. And I guess we'll go ahead and do it by 40 pixels. We'll um, change these values if we need to. So shift it down by 40 pixels. So now every um, Y value, we also want it Y shifted. Um, and we don't want to multiply this by anything because this is going to shift the entire column because we're giving that entire column this Y coordinate. And that's it. Let's see if that takes care of it. But this will shift everything down, so we can't do that. We only have to do this to every other row. So we can simply take care of that. Inside the for loop, we're going to check. So if I modulus 2 is equal to 0, so if it's an even number, if I is an even number, if the column is an even column, zero is considered an even column in this context. It's not really odd or even, but the modulus will still return um, even, I guess. So one would be odd, two would be even, three would be odd, etc. 
Okay, so if it's an even column, zero included in this case, we want to change Y shift to zero. So then Y shift effectively has no effect. Else, then we're going to assume that, so here we're assuming that this is an even column, change Y shift to nothing. Here we're going to assume that it's an odd column. We want to change Y shift to its original value of 40. Okay, and then we call the create hex column and let's see if this works. And ta-da, there we go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So um, yeah, it does work. As you can see, we have a little spacing issue though. So let's just go ahead and um, mess with our values a little bit. Um, okay, let's shift it a little bit further down and uh, a little bit more to the right. So let's Okay, and then let's run this. And there we go, it looks good. Um, so now here we've created a five by five. And uh, just to show you guys how easy it is to now create a bigger one, we just simply go back inside our game and change these values. So I don't know, if you guys want like a seven by seven, you can easily create that. And there you go, now you have a seven by seven. If you want a three by three, You can get a three by three and it works. So let me just go ahead and see how much time I have that, that will dictate how much explaining I can do. Okay, um, 11 minutes, so I have like a minute or two of explaining. Um, so basically, I hope you guys saw the process of generalizing. Um, I believe this is called a, um, stepwise refinement, this process of programming or uh, bottom up development. I'm not sure which one, but basically you, you come up with a plan, right? So my plan was to have a member function called place hexes that would place the hexes. Now that's a very vague plan. And then I just went in and tried to do it. And I discovered new things. I realized, hmm, I can have another member function that creates a column. And then my main place hexes can repeatedly call that one. So that by, by spreading the, uh, uh, basically the responsibilities into two functions, it made more sense to me and it made it easier for me to program it. Uh, I could have had all the code in here where I have a for loop within a for loop, but I don't like dealing with that kind of uh, structure. And it, it's just, you know, nobody likes dealing with that kind of, nobody likes dealing with nested for loops. So I just put in one for loop in this column and then the other one in this member function. And uh, there we go, we've implemented, let's just make sure we have finished implementing. Yep, we finished implementing the Hexport class. So thank you guys for watching. Um, and let me know what you guys want me to cover. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye bye. Oh man, my computer's frozen again. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. There we go. Bye bye.